Hello and welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer. St. Teresa tells us that the divine path of Carmelite or silent prayer is the royal road to heaven and that those who travel it will be given a great treasure. So today we will be looking at Teresa's ninth foundation as she describes it in the book of her foundations. It's chapter 21, and it is the foundation that she made in Segovia. So chapter 21 treats of the foundation in Segovia of the Carmel of the glorious St. Joseph. It was founded on the very feast of St. Joseph in 1574. Before we had our house in Salamanca, Father Pedro Fernandez from the Apostolic Commissary ordered me to go to the Incarnation Monastery in Avila for three years. I also mentioned before that when he saw the need of the nuns in Salamanca for a house, he ordered me to go there so they could move into one that belonged to them. So one day, while in Salamanca and in prayer, our Lord told me to go to Segovia to make a foundation. This seemed impossible. I couldn't do that. I didn't have an order to do so. Father Fernandez had said that he didn't want me making any more foundations. In addition, the three years I was to stay at the Incarnation were not yet over. While I was thinking about this, the Lord told me to tell Father Fernandez and that the Lord himself would bring about the foundation. From Salamanca, I wrote to Father Fernandez asking him for an order to found a monastery in Segovia that had been accepted by both the bishop and the city. I believe, really, I do believe that His Majesty wanted this monastery because the apostolic commissary, Father Fernandez, immediately said yes, and he gave me permission. I was amazed. From Salamanca, I arranged to rent a house. I found it was much better to rent a house at first. There were many reasons for this decision. But at this time, the main one was that I didn't have a cent to buy a house. Donna Anna de Gemena had come to see me in Alvada. She was a very good servant of God, whose calling was always to be a nun. Thus, both she and one of her daughters entered. They entered once the monastery was finished, and the Lord then took away the unhappiness that she had experienced, both while married and later as a widow. This good lady acquired the house and provided all we needed. As a result, I really had very little work to do, but there is never a foundation without a trial. And of course, the trial came. And for the half a year I was there, I was always sick. On the Feast of St. Joseph, we reserved the Blessed Sacrament. Though we had permission, I wanted to enter on the eve of the feast. At night, and in secret. Much time had passed since I had received the permission from the bishop. I had only received it in word, but never in writing. What a mistake. When the vicar general learned that the monastery had been founded, he came at once and he was very angry. He did not allow mass to be said there any more. He also wanted to take the one who said it, a discalced friar, and put him in jail. Antonio Gayton was from Alba. 
He had been called by the Lord while very much involved in the world. All he thought of now was how best to serve the Lord. He helped me much and did a great deal of work for me. He was a man of deep prayer, and God has granted him many favors that others might consider a burden to carry, but it was very easy for him to accept. It seemed that God called both he and Father Julian of Avila to help me. By giving me company like this, our Lord seemed to have desired that all turn out well. When traveling, Father Julian taught those who traveled with us or whom we met along the way. Thus, he served his majesty in every way possible. It's only right, my daughters, that those of you who read these foundations should know what you owe to these two men. They labored much for the good you now enjoy in these monasteries. Recommend them to our Lord in prayer, for if you knew the bad nights and the days they suffered, the trials on the road, you would do so very willingly. The vicar general felt it best to have a guard at the door of the church. I, I really don't know why. As for me... I was never much bothered once possession of the foundation had taken place. All of my fears came before. The vicar general knew I had ordained, obtained permission from the bishop, but he felt we should have informed him. It's my belief that things would have gone much worse if we had told him in advance. We finally got him to allow us to stay in the monastery, but he removed the Blessed Sacrament. And we just accepted to remain like this for months until a house was bought. Along with the house came many lawsuits. What a trial it was to have to contend with many opinions. When one litigation seemed over, another would begin. It was really a challenge <laughs> to go through all of this. Finally, after we gave much money, the lawsuit ended. When the party found out we had moved to a house in secrecy, they thought it was good to settle for a sum of money. The greatest suffering with all these obstacles was that in seven or eight days, my three years as prioress at the Incarnation would end, and I had to be there. But all ended well. No contention remained, and within two or three days, I was at the Incarnation Monastery in Avila. May his name be blessed, who has always granted me so many favors. Amen. So that was the story of the foundation of the monastery in Segovia. The next monastery we will look at, the next foundation, will be in Bayas. So I hope you're enjoying the adventures of St. Teresa of Avila, La Santa of Spain. So God bless you and yours. Amen. <laughs>